Hey everyone, welcome back. In this part we're gonna take on Dragon Roost Cavern, which is the first dungeon in the game. Uh, it's a pretty easy dungeon overall, but one thing that's important about it is it's the first place in the game where we're gonna use the storage glitch, uh, which I'll explain soon. So for this room we're just gonna, you know, disarm these guys, take the stick, because we need it. It's already lit up, which is cool. I'm gonna go up here and just just light these. You can throw that stick at the second torch, but I don't know, it's barely worth it unless you're aligned perfectly. So yeah, we'll grab the key here. We're actually going to follow the route for this dungeon completely normally. I'm just going to do it really fast. So I'm going to show you some strategies that we would use to speed it up. First of all, we're going to roll into this cutscene, which puts Link a little further ahead of where he normally would be, which is a nice little time saver. We're just going to follow this path around and just jump slash down here, pull this out. As you can see that thing is about to come out. Rather than jump across, which you can do from here, onto that platform, we're just going to wait and not risk it because it's only a second or two. So we'll come along here, grab this bomb, and just press B to drop it here and turn around and face it. This way it'll blast Link inside the rock as it explodes, which puts you quite close to the door. So in this room, we're just going to throw this pot onto the lava and jump onto it. This lets us cross. This little cutscene here only plays once and it can be shortened sometimes but no one's really sure what causes it. So if you get a quicker cutscene then good for you, if not don't worry about it. So in this room, the best thing to do is just to get his attention, step back and then jump slash. This causes him to drop his sword, which we can then pick up. Apparently. Maybe not. Well whatever. It kind of got merged with the pot there, as you saw. That was because I was a little slow to hit him. You would, of course, be faster. And you can just throw that into these these uh, posts up here. You don't have to climb up the ledge with it. So this is another small key. We're just going to go back through here and back into the main room. Now, the next thing we want to do is hit this bomb flower right here. And there are a few ways to do that. Uh, the intended way, I think, is to just pick up a pot and throw it at it. So if that's fine for you, then just do that. Uh, the way I prefer to do it is to do a spin attack when you're close to the edge. The problem with this is that if you do a spin attack when you're too close, sometimes you'll hold forward on the stick just a little too long and you'll fall into the lava, which means actually that the rock still explodes, but Link dies right afterwards, which means you have to wait for him to respawn. So I'm just going to do that though. Stand about here and just do a spin attack a little further maybe. Yeah, there we go. You'll get used to the position for that, but like I said, if you prefer to just throw the pot, then just do that. It doesn't really make any difference other than maybe a second or so. So, in this room, we're just gonna take the stick from this guy, which can be kind of hard to see. The room's kind of, like, colored in a way that makes it hard to see the stick. I'm getting trolled a little by the trees here. Wow, I'm really really getting cold. Where'd it go? Where's the stick? There it is. Just make sure you don't pick up the chew jelly as well. Because that's a little cutscene that plays that we really don't want to see. It's not long of course, but we don't need chew jelly at all in this run, so it's completely pointless to pick any up. Just jump across here at the side of the bridge. This sort of gets the guy to maybe attack you or just sort of follow you over there. Uh, and he can't reach you in time when you get to the ladder. I just barely made this, but normally if you see that thing about to shoot fire, you should you should wait. I'm going to do that here actually because I don't want to set a bad example. You don't normally kill this guy, of course, I'm just doing it to show what I'm going to do now. Instead of sidling along here, we're just going to line link parallel to the wall, run off and do a jump slash. Really, really easy trick there. We're going to do something similar here. This one's not as easy, but it's still pretty easy. What we're going to do is, we're going to stand right here, right before this little stone structure, because that's where he has to start shimmying along. We're going to do a side hop, and right at the end of it, we're going to do a jump slash, and it's going to push him back onto the ledge. Like that. Uh, you can see that the jump slash there was really, really small. Sometimes he'll do a full jump slash and still land on the ledge. Sometimes he'll like hit against the ledge, but then grab onto it anyway. Uh, any of these things are fine. As long as he climbs back up, you're fine. Just don't do it too late or you won't make it. So in here, 
just gonna go through the room normally. Not a lot to say. Just gonna talk to the king. He's gonna tell us about the rats. They're not really a problem here, but they're gonna get kinda irritating later on during the Triforce hunt at one part. Yeah, he's talking about using bait to get rid of them. Or to get them to give you things, but we're not even gonna get the bait bag. So let's light the torch and just throw it across and jump off just before the cutscene starts. This means that Link obviously is further along during the cutscene and you don't have to move as much afterwards. So another small key. There's quite a lot of keys in this dungeon actually. Much more than any other one. So we're going to just exit this room over here and we're going to be outside again. And what we're going to do for this part... Well, I'll show you when we go up here. Oops. That's why you shouldn't roll on stairs. We're just going to kind of line so that Link is parallel to this pathway. We're just going to roll up to the board and we're going to stab him from the front. This picks up the key because the, the sword actually picks up the key. Just be careful when you're coming back along here. You don't want to like be too quick and accidentally run off the ledge. So back inside, we're going to pick up another stick. Just uh, just burn everything in our way, really. Again, you can throw that at the torch, but it doesn't really save that much time. Although it does look cool if you get it. So in here, we have to kill three Bokoblins. Really not that hard. Just the usual one, two, three, spin attack. To a jump slash to get this guy out. Just ignore him for now, go and get the other one. Just roll into the wall. One, two, three. Ah, uh, where's the other one? Two, three. three. And I did get both of them, right? Yep. Oops. Wow, I kind of screwed that up there, but like what you want to do, if you can do it, like if you have enough time before they die, you want to do a jump slash onto this table and jump at the ladder. This way if the cutscene starts, Link is already semi up the ladder by the time you regain control of him, which uh, saves a little bit of time. So in this next room, we're just going to have to be a little quick here. Pick up the pot and quickly jump onto the middle platform. This should get the guy to look at you and open his claws. When he does that, just run around him and throw the pot onto the lava. Sometimes he won't do that, but you will kind of still stop in place. As long as he stops moving, you can run around him. So in here, we're not going to bother with this drop, we're just going to... We're going to do this one. If you time that right, you can jump slash into the cutscene and land right in front of the door just like I did. Doesn't really save that much time, just looks kind of neat. So we're back outside again. This is the final outside section of the dungeon. There's Falou. He's really pissed off. And we'll see why really soon. But what we're going to do for now is go and fight these kids. There's Medley. Managed to get herself caught. Just remember, these are the same things you fought at Forsaken Fortress, which means you take five hits each, then a spin attack each. So I was counting them there as I as I delivered them to them. This guy's gonna take ten hits, which is the same as eight in a spin attack, so let's count that. One, two, oops, two, three, four. Whatever. <laughs> Five, six. Sometimes he trolls you and blocks you. Is it? Seven, eight, and there's a spin attack. Ugh, it's not working. Oh my god, he's really... He really doesn't want to die today. Whatever. Sometimes that guy does troll you. Because he can block you really easily, but... Most of the time that doesn't happen. Most of the time you can easily get eight hits in. Just eight stabs. And then a spin attack, and he dies really quickly. But even without that, it's not exactly a long fight, so it's not a huge deal if you don't get a perfect fight here. So we're going to get the grapple hook in just a second, and we're actually pretty much done with this dungeon already because the thing that we're going to do right after we get this is we're going to skip the boss key. We're going to go back into the room downstairs and go straight into the boss room. And obviously, in a regular gameplay, you'd have to get the key to open the door, but. We're speedrunners, so we don't have time for that crap. We're gonna skip it. Okay, so we're gonna equip the grapple right now. And rather than climbing up this ledge, we can just stand down here, aim up, and we can still reach it. 
I guess they never thought anyone would think of that, but like I said, we're speedrunners. We think of everything. So, we're just making our way back across. And back inside. And we're about to do storage for the first time. Which is going to be really interesting. So before we do that though, we're going to just grapple our way across here. And you wouldn't normally do what I'm about to do in a run, but I'm going to do it just to make this a little easier. I'm going to kill this guy. You normally don't have to do that. He's not a problem. So we're going to get storage, and what that means is we're going to actually climb on this ledge, and Link is going to pull himself up. Also, you need to be like right to the corner. Link's going to pull himself up uh, with the Wind Waker in his hand, which means you have to like pull out the Wind Waker before you try this and put it away. Uh, and when we get on this ledge, as soon as Link pulls himself up, we're going to press the Wind Waker button, and what's going to happen is, I'm just going to demonstrate that, He's going to fall down while he has the Wind Waker in his hand. I'll just do it again. The timing on this is supposedly frame perfect. I don't really know if it is. I feel like it might be two frames because it's a lot easier than the second part of the trick. But just once more. Yeah, he just falls. And what we want to do is we want to press B to cancel this, to cancel the Wind Waker animation while he's falling, but only on a certain frame. The frame we're looking for is the frame three frames before he hits the ground. Now, obviously, we can't view this in frame advance or anything like that, it's not a TES, we just have to kind of go with our guts and like press it when we think the right time is. But I'm going to show you what happens uh, if you do it too early and too late. If you do it too early, this happens. Okay, no, that's not what happens if you do it too early. If you do it too early... Wow, I'm really embarrassing myself right now. Yeah, that's what happens if you do it too early. You saw he sort of stuttered in the air, then fell down the rest of the distance. Yeah, if you pull out the Wind Waker too late, by the way, what happens is, as you just saw, he like, stands up here and plays it. That's truly not what we want. So yeah, that was too early. Too late is that, where like he just, you know, he reaches the ground, he still has the Wind Waker in his hand, and there's nothing you can do except cancel it. What we want to happen is not that. That's what we want to happen. This happened because I cancelled the Wind Waker dive three frames before Link's feet touched the ground. And like I said earlier, you just kind of have to get a feel for that. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice at first, but as you can see, Link is still in Wind Waker mode, but the camera's free. You know, I can move around and I can press B to cancel it as usual. Oh, wow. I accidentally played a song. I think I should probably do it again, just to be safe. That is really weird. So yeah, try not to play songs when you're in storage mode, it's really silly and just wastes a lot of time, you have to get storage again afterwards. But yeah, what I did there by cancelling the Wind Waker dive on that specific frame is that the next time like a cutscene or something like a cutscene happens, it's not actually going to play, it's going to get stored. And that's why we call it storage. So if I were to open a chest, the chest opens but the little cutscene or whatever plays. And you can hear that the chest is still like, it's like in a perpetual state of opening. It's pretty much going to stay like that until we leave this area, until we get a loading zone at least. Uh, and what's significant about doing it with a chest as that during the chest opening cutscene, Link's hitbox is actually a lot smaller than it usually is. So right now it's kind of stuck like that. As you can see, Link is able to move through things somewhat. And this is going to be really useful for us because we're going to use it to get through the boss key door. So what we're going to do is we're just going to walk up here and stop, and he falls right through. When we're in here, we're just going to go into C up mode and just aim like right between the wall and the door. Come out of C up mode, just hold L and roll forward. And you'll just pop in that little crack. And that allows us to skip the boss key. I hope that trick was explained well. If it wasn't and you still don't understand it, just let me know. I'm happy to explain it again. Because it is a very useful trick which comes up in a bunch of dungeons. But yeah, everything's back to normal now. You heard uh, Link getting some rupees right as he entered this room. The reason for that is that the storage was then cancelled. So yeah, this fight's pretty normal, you know, you're just just uh, 
grappling the tail and swinging across three times to get that thing off the ceiling. There's not a lot to say. I guess I could say that on the first hit there, before I actually aimed the grapple hook, I did the backflip. The reason I did that was just so that she wouldn't hit me as quickly. It gives me a little bit more time to react, I guess. What I'm going to do for the second hit is stand in front of her. You'll see why that's significant in a minute. Just also make sure that these little fireballs don't hit you. Sometimes you can get unlucky with that, but it only costs a little second or so, so it's not a huge deal. So this is the second hit, and the reason I stood in front of her was because now I'm behind her. And this means that after the third hit, after the second phase of the fight starts where I have to attack her eye, I'm going to be right in front of her, which is exactly where I want to be, because it means I don't have to run around the room. So let's just hope we don't get hit here, okay. I'm going to swing across for the final hit. And yeah, that's the first phase done. Nothing too hard, the only problem is sometimes getting hit by random fireballs, but we got lucky this time. As you can see, Link is right there in the cutscene. So what we're going to do here is we're going to grapple her out of the air really quickly, if we can. And we can. Stab, spin attack. Just wait a little second before you throw the next grapple. There's like a small like period where she's invincible there. But we got her again. We two cycled her second phase, which is the quickest you can actually do it. You can't do it in one cycle at all. So yeah, pretty easy boss. Not a lot to say about it really. If you just follow the strategy that I used here, you'll be fine. But yeah, that's the first dungeon. Obviously the, the most important thing to take from this video is the fact that we learned how to do storage uh, and what it can do. And just to recap, um, it lets you essentially clip through walls, uh, which can let you skip a bunch of things. Um, some other examples of where it's useful in similar ways to this are in the next dungeon, where we're going to do essentially the same thing. We're going to skip the boss key, but it's even simpler than it was in this dungeon. And also later on in the game in the Earth Temple, we're going to do the exact same thing again. We're going to skip that boss key as well. Terror of the Gods in the Wind Temple, we still have to get the boss keys in there. Unfortunately, those dungeons are too, too well made. But yeah, there's going to be kind of a long cutscene here. I'm probably not going to say anything useful for the entire rest of the video, so... You might want to stop watching now. I don't know. Baloo sounds just as loud and angry when he's happy as when he's actually angry. You can see in the background there that there was a rock on the wall uh, with some bomb flowers next to it. We're going to get that later. It actually contains a chest with 200 rupees in it, which is going to help us out quite a lot later on during the Triforce hunt. But we need the bow to hit it off the wall, so that's not a problem for us right now. So here's Kamali with the pearl that you wouldn't give us earlier. I have a feeling he's going to give it to us now. Yep, there he goes. So this is the first one out of the three. Something that kind of bothered me about this game is that the third pearl didn't really have a dungeon. I mean, you could sort of say that Tower of the Gods was its dungeon, but you did Tower of the Gods after it. I mean, it just doesn't really feel like you did anything to get that third pearl. So, Valu's talking there in Hylian, which is why the text is all like just little broken squares and stuff like that. Um, if you're playing this game on New Game Plus, i.e. if you've finished the game once and you play through that same file again, where Link keeps his pyjamas on the entire time, then that text is actually translated to English. Or if you're playing on Japanese and it's translated to Japanese. Which is kind of interesting, I guess, but it's actually slower. The Hylian text is a lot quicker than English. But yeah, this video is pretty much done now. I'm going to save the game right here, because there's not a lot to do right now. In the next video we're going to do the first Super Swim, and we're going to go all the way to Bird's Peak Rock, which is where we're going to get, even though it's early in the run, it's where we're going to get the first Triforce chart. And then we're going to head to Forbidden Woods, and take on the second dungeon. So yeah, 
Thanks for watching everyone, I hope this video helped you, and yeah, we'll try and get the next one out really soon. See ya.